are you, George Costanza? I'm the opposite of every guy you've ever met. You know, just admitting a man is handsome doesn't necessarily make you a homosexual. It doesn't help. I'm only paying half. You can't do that. Why not? He's a doctor. You gotta pay what he says. Oh, no, 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 no. I pay what I say. <laughs> you had to tell Julie that I made a special point of telling you that I bought you the big salad, didn't you? Uh, uh, uh. You know, <laughs> if it was a regular salad, I wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> but you had to have that big salad! She invites me up at 12 o'clock at night for coffee. And I don't go out. No, thank you. I don't want coffee. It keeps me up. <laughs> Too late for me to drink coffee. I said this to her. People this stupid shouldn't be allowed to live. Nice to meet you. Well, I wish I could say the same, but I must say, with all due respect, I find it very hard to see the logic behind some of the moves you have made with this fine organization. In the past 20 years, you have caused myself and the city of New York a good deal of distress as we have watched you take our beloved Yankees and reduce them to a laughing stock, all for the glorification of your massive ego. Hire this man. You mean to walk back in? That's the toughest move in the business. You're sending me out into no man's land, and if I get shot down, I have to crawl all the way back. Well, I can't do it. I can't do it, I tell you. I proclaim this... The summer of George! I don't think I could do it. You know, they always remember the first time. I don't want to be remembered. I want to be forgotten. Jerry, I've been preparing for this moment my entire life. You know, George... The ocean called. They're running out of shrimp. <laughs> oh, yeah, Riley? <laughs> well, the jerk store called. They're running out of you. I don't like when a woman says, make love to me. It's, it's intimidating. The last time a woman said that to me, I wound up apologizing to her. Read that poem. I can't read it. I need my glasses. You don't need glasses. You're just weak. You're weak. Leave him alone! <laughs> All right, George. It's time for the Festivus Feats of Strength. Oh, no! Turn it off! No Feats of Strength! I find Festivus! <clears throat> just a second. Just a... Uh, let me speak. <laughs> she called. He yelled, Cartwright. <laughs> I missed her. Who's Cartwright? I'm Cartwright. <laughs> You're not Cartwright. Of course I'm not Cartwright! <laughs> if I wasn't in these shackles. But you are, Blanche. You are in the shackles. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to read my Time magazine. Last Maybe I'll read it tomorrow in the park. Supposed to be a beautiful day. Have a nice life. Sit and set it. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. But I'm disturbed. I'm depressed. I'm inadequate. I got it all. Is it flowing? I like flowing, cascading hair. Thick, lustrous hair is very important to me. George is getting upset. It's come to my attention that you and the cleaning woman have engaged in sexual intercourse on the desk in your office. Is that correct? Was that wrong? You're not gonna do it! What do you mean you're not gonna do it? I can't! I'm not an orgy guy! Are you crazy? This is like discovering plutonium by accident! It's not a lie, if you believe it. You know, George, that's an onion. <laughs> yes.
Yes, it is. You're not out there. You can't be, because I am out there. And if I see you out there, there's not enough voltage in this world to electroshock me back into coherence. From now on, when you take a chip, just take one dip and end it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Timmy. <laughs> but I don't dip that way. Oh, you don't, huh? No. You dip the way you want to dip, I'll dip the way I want to dip. Give me the chip! Hey, hey, hey! Get out! You see, right now, I have relationship George. But there is also independent George. That's the George you know, the George you grew up with. Movie George, coffee shop George, liar George, bawdy George. I, I love that George. Me too. And he's dying, Jerry. If relationship George walks through this door, he will kill independent George. A George divided against itself cannot stand. Shut your traps and stop kicking the seats. We're trying to watch the movie. And if I have to tell you again, we're going to take it outside and I'm going to show you what it's like. You understand me? Now shut your mouths or I'll shut them for you. And if you think I'm kidding, just try me. Try me. Because I would love it. Serenity now! 6.30. Time for your bath. George, I'm hungry. Hang on, uh, hang on. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not gay. My name's Buck Naked. I'm a porno writer. I feel like my old self again. Totally inadequate, completely insecure, paranoid, neurotic. It's a pleasure. I'm really sorry. I was in the pool! I was in the pool! I just threw away a lifetime of guilt-free sex and floor seats for every sporting event in Madison Square Garden. So please, a little respect, for I am Costanza, Lord of the Idiots. I'm an architect. You're an architect? I'm not. My mother caught me. Caught you? Doing what? You know. I was alone. We're not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. I mean, it's fine if that's who you are. Absolutely. I mean, I have many gay friends. My father's gay. Look, I... I, I know what I heard. I heard. It was a joke. All right, look, you want to have sex right now? Do you want to have sex with me right now? Let's go. Come on, let's go, baby. Come on. She says, uh... absolutely filthy. And then she starts talking about her panties. I'm gonna need some water here. <laughs> I'm out of there. I did it. It's over. You did it? What happened? I told her. In the kitchen. Which was risky, because it's near all the knives. <laughs> <laughs> I started with the word listen. I uh -huh. said, listen, Marlene. And the next thing I know, I'm in the middle of it. And there's this voice inside of me going, you're doing it. You're doing it. And then... She started to cry, and I, I weakened a little bit. I almost relented, but the voice, Jerry, the voice said, keep going, keep going, you're almost out. It's, it's like I was making a prison break, you know, and I'm, I'm heading for the wall, and I, I trip, and I twist my ankle, and they throw that light on you, you know? <laughs> so somehow, I get through the crying, and I keep running. Then the cursing started. She's firing at me from the guard towers. 
son of a bang, son of a boom. I get to the top of the wall, the front door. I open it up. I'm one foot away. I take one last look around the penitentiary, and I jump. You ask me here to have lunch, tell me you slept with Elaine, and then say you're not in the mood for details. Now, you listen to me. I want details, and I want them right now. I don't have a job. I have no place to go. You're not in the mood. Well, you get in the mood. What delay industries? No. Vandalay! Say Vandalay! No, no, you're way, way, way off. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the right number, no. but this is an apartment. No, what? Vandalay! Say Vandalay! Say Vandalay Industries! Yeah, no problem. No problem. My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> Come on, let's go. What about Elaine? Hell with Elaine. She'll be furious. We're dying here. <laughs> That's her. She's here. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Where is Dad? He's in the bedroom. You're giving me the it's not you, it's me routine? I invented it's not you, it's me. Nobody tells me it's them, not me. If it's anybody, it's me. All right. George, it's you. You're damn right it's me. Or not, George isn't at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out, or I'd pick up the phone. Where could I be? <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not home. The sea was angry that day, my friends. <laughs> like an old man trying to send back soup in a deli. I got about 50 feet out, and suddenly, the great beast appeared before me. I tell you, he was 10 stories high if he was a foot. As if sensing my presence, he let out a great bellow. I said, easy, big fella. And then, as I watched him struggling, I realized that something was obstructing its breathing. From where I was standing, I could see directly into the eye of the great fish. Mammal. Whatever. Well, what did you do next? Well, then, from out of nowhere, a huge tidal wave lifted me, tossed me like a cork, and I found myself right on top of him, face to face with the blowhole. I, I, I could barely see from the waves crashing down upon me, but I knew something was there. So I reached my hand in, felt around, and pulled out the obstruction. <laughs>